So you have overlays, you want to use them in OBS Studio, you're not exactly sure how to make that work. Don't worry, I got you covered. In this video today, I'm going to go over setting up overlays in OBS Studio. Doing it manually is easier than you think. I'm going to show you the difference between whether you need to use an image source or a media source for the overlays you're using, how to set them up easier, and we're going to show you how to group them to make it easier to move them when you need to. My name's Gene, let's get you into setting up your overlays. Let's get good at things, yeah! So if you find anything in this video that's helpful to you or whatnot, please hit that like in the bottom, leave a comment, let me know if anything needs to be clarified, or, you know, let me know how I'm doing. Also, hit the subscribe button, because I will have more videos going more in-depth on things you can do with OBS and really make your streams, your content, whatever you're doing with OBS, stand out a little bit more. Now, let's go ahead get in to manually setting up overlays in OBS Studio. So here we go. We This is where I left off the last time in the last video. And if you didn't see the last video, you might want to click on it. I'm going to try and pop it up here. Good times. So first off, I'm just going to go ahead and move this in the center. and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so that way you guys can actually see what's going on. So let's add a background image and let's say it's a static image. We're going to go to image and we'll call this background. Sure. And then you're going to go in and find the background you want. And we're going to use this one. Ta-da! Yay! But it's above everything else, so all you gotta do is then take it, click and hold, drag down, and voila! We've still got the background. So images are gonna be easy. Those are PNGs, GIFs, JPEG, however you wanna go about it, but those are still images. So for an animated thing, such as like a animated camera frame that I'm gonna about to put around here, you're gonna use media source. And a media source is simply anything that is a straight up just movie file type thing. And that can be .webm, .mpeg, whichever that's going to be kind of a movie file. Click the plus sign. And then we're gonna go to media source. And we'll call this camera frame. Hit okay. Browse for it, click it in. Now, it's very important that you actually click the loop. If you do not loop it, it'll end. But if you keep the loop, it'll replay over and over again once it plays. If you are having problems with too much CPU usage, you can click use hardware decoding when available, and that will use your GPU instead of your CPU to maybe offload some of the work from your CPU and kind of make things easier. Once you've done that, click OK, and it's in the wrong spot. That's what she said. <laughs> so let's just take it and we'll try to drag it. Click manually drag. Good to go. Real quick, let me show you what happens when maybe this camera frame might not line up with what you're working with. So let's say I accidentally have a four to three ratio instead of a 16 to nine ratio on the camera box. There's a very, very easy way to take care of this. So click on your webcam right here. If you hold the alt key while clicking the side, hold alt, you can actually drag and crop out any unneeded area. This makes it much cleaner, much easier to work with. When you add a media source, it adds a track into your audio mixer because it's a media source. It thinks there should be sound to it. So let's go ahead and make sure that we keep that out of our mixer to make sure that we can still navigate our audio sources easily. So what I'll do is right here where it says camera frame. Camera frame is what we named it and it's showing as an audio source. I will go ahead and mute it. And then if you right click on the track, you can actually hit hide and that will take it out so that way you don't have to see it anymore. And this will make it a lot easier for you to work with. That's one drawback when you're adding media sources into OBS Studio. But I promise as long as you're keeping that clean and you're making sure you're hiding those certain sources that may kind of gum up the works in your mixer, it's going to make it easier as long as you're keeping track of it. So adding in sources manually when it comes to overlays is not entirely difficult. Actually, it's not difficult at all. It's just knowing these shortcuts to make your life a little easier. What's actually going to make things a little more difficult is when you're trying to move these things in different areas. So how do you do this stuff easily? How do you make sure that you can move everything together? There's two methods we can go with. The first is the grouping. Grouping is basically using folders to stack everything together and move it as one source. So let me show you how to do that. Down here in sources, you're going to right click something. You're going to go up to where it says group selected items. We're going to call this group camera. Sure. And then you want to make sure within that folder, we have everything we want. And you need to make sure that they stack the way they're supposed to. So the frame on top of the webcam, that way that frame's still on top. Remember, it's important that you list things as top most shown to bottom most shown. So now that we have our camera folder, we can shrink this down. If you click the camera, now we can actually adjust the size 
and we can move this around much easier than we could before. So let's say Call of Duty. A lot of people like to do Call of Duty here, but when it comes to Fall Guys, you need it to be over here. Now you have a way you can move it easier without being destructive. You can group as many things into one spot as you want. So if you also had where you had goals and you had other things attached to there and you wanted to move them all together, you can put them all in one single group. So I'm gonna add my logo and that's gonna be a static image. So I'll type in logo, bring my file in. All right, we got the logo selected. Now we're gonna bring it in, hit okay. That's a little too big. And I'm just gonna fit it in here. There, I've got my logo in there. Now all I gotta do is take my logo, drop it in and voila. This way now, my logo stays in this little box that I made for it and we can shrink it and everything stays together. So now we've shown you how to do this with the group. Let me show you the second way and the way I prefer to do things. Now scene nesting is essentially taking one scene and putting it into another, creating scene-ception. Just like Inception. Yes, I'm, I'm literally calling it scene-ception, I'm sorry. But putting scenes within scenes can actually keep things well organized and a little bit easier to control certain things, especially when you get into more advanced OBS techniques, such as adding in channel point redemptions, adding in your own alerts that you drive from something like streamer bot or for various other things, like maybe you find a widget out there that actually will show what music's playing and things like that. There is so much creative freedom and a lot more control you can do with scene nesting, and this is my preferred method. So let's go ahead and hide this current group we've got going and we'll build a whole scene with just the camera. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a completely new scene. So with scene nesting, you're creating a scene. You wanna make sure you keep this organized. So what you're gonna wanna do is at least label it somehow. For me, I have put in brackets that it's a group and then labeled it the camera. This tells me that this is for my camera that I'm using as well as the framing around it and anything else I need to add. So now we have this scene, but there's nothing in it. So what we'll start with is our video capture device, which we pick up our webcam. And now we've got the camera back. Let's size it down a little bit and kind of just put it in the center. Next, let's add our camera frame, which was a media source. So add the existing, add the camera frame, and here we have it in here. So let's go ahead and just size it the best we can. Click on your camera, so that way you can crop out what you need to. Remember to Alt, click, and now it's cleaned up and looking much better. Let me get my logo for this little box down here, which was an image. It was a static image Add existing logo. Now it's there. Let's resize it down. Okay, so everything's in here now. This is how we want it to be. This is exactly what we want it to look like. One key thing you can do to make sure none of this moves it when you get in here to add more stuff, this little lock icon you can actually use to make sure you don't accidentally move something. So I'm gonna lock all these. Now I can click wherever I want to and I can't actually change anything there. So you can lock things to make sure that they stay in the place they need to. Now let's add this to our scene so that way we can make sure that we can do what we want with it. Coming back to our normal scene, what you want to do is go down to the plus icon like we do with everything and you're going to go up to where it says scene. This is where you add an entire scene onto your existing scene. With this, I'm just going to add the group camera and voila, now it's in here. So what I can do now, if I wanted to, I can crop this down to just be size the way I want. So I've cropped these down to be at least a little bit better of a size to work with. Now, all I, if I want to resize it, I just grab the corner and I'm good to go. And I can't mess with the design of anything in this webcam, making it so much easier to work with. I can move it wherever I want and I don't have to worry about something getting messed up. When you're having to manage fewer sources in one scene, it can make things so much easier rather than trying to dive through a massive list of different sources you might have in your scenes. By doing scene nesting, it eliminates that. It uh, Scene nesting gives you the ability to concentrate on one particular aspect while maintaining everything else and you don't have to worry about potential potentially messing something else up. There's a lot of different things you can do with OBS, and this is just the start. In the next video, I'm planning to go into some OBS plugins to show you how I've created things like my big chin effect, how I do the tiny effect, how I do all these various weird things that I have done for channel points, for bit redemptions, for just chat commands. There's so many possibilities with OBS Studio.
and I'm going to try and show you everything I know how to do. So make sure you're subscribed so you can catch the next video when we get into more advanced techniques in OBS Studio. With that, I hope you guys have a good time streaming. I hope this helps you guys get your OBS set up in a way that is much easier to manage and maintain. I'll catch you on the next video. I'm looking forward to it. Love you. Catch you later.